I am Kirsten Olson, and I am the author of Wounded by School and some other books on mindful leadership and schools as colonizers. And I now work with educators and teams of leaders all over the country and the world who are trying to really invent the next stage of learning and education. So when I was biking over here this morning, I was trying to think of a metaphor that really described powerfully where I think we are in American education right now. And the thing that popped into my mind was the scene in that wonderful movie, Apollo 13, where someone from ground control turns to the commander and he says, Gene, the Odyssey is dying. And that really is the way I feel about the American educational system, in spite of the efforts of an incredible ground crew that is trying to fix around the edges. But I think essentially, the model is dead and must be wholly reinvented. And the people inside the capsule are dying from lack of oxygen. And I think that, in spite of the fact that things have changed a lot since I wrote Wounded by School, and I actually see real improvements in practice in the work that I do and the systems that I work in, I still see one really fundamental constant, and that is that people are incredibly bored in the schools that I go into. <laughs> they, the kids are bored, the teachers are bored, and many of the individuals who lead these organizations are overstressed and also kind of nullified by the work that they have to do. So if you take learning really seriously, as seriously as you take your heart health, your, your bodily wellness, your spiritual life, then schools are pretty dead places. They're pretty depressing places. So I see little kids who are doing things like writing the five elements of a fairy tale onto a worksheet and trying to find those five elements in a fairy tale instead of reading and exploring and living into the fairy tale. I see eighth graders still reciting the names and dates of the Spanish explorers. This is a, uh, something that I did in the third grade way back in ancient times when I was in elementary school. And they're sitting there lackluster and bored out of their minds instead of talking about why did Spain think it had a right to claim all these places and what is colonization about and how do we experience colonization now. And I see teachers standing in front of their classes sometimes simply saying just follow the procedure and we can all get out of here. And school leaders who say, we are in this game, we got to make it work. We've got several teachers we don't think much of. Let's not put much into them. We'll fire them at the end of the year and we hope it doesn't show on test scores. This is what our system does to us. And I think this boredom and lack of oxygen continues to show in these really palpable ways, and that is we have the highest dropout rate of any industrialized country in the world. And here in Boston, although it's gotten better, 45% of kids of color drop out of high school before graduating. So I asked kids when I was writing Wounded by School, what does it actually feel like to be here? What does it feel like to be in this institution this thing we call school. And they would say, no one knows that I'm here. No one knows who I am. I used to be really interested in writing, but now I'm scared that it's going to be graded in a particular way, and I never really can put myself fully into it. A kid who is acting out and spends a lot of time in in school suspension says, the only way I can show up as myself is to push back here, doing what Herb Cole calls not learning. Or 
a young man who runs now a national advocacy group for students who are experiencing learning differences. And he says what he was called every day was stupid, crazy, and lazy. And my eyes were really open to this based on my own experiences of being in school, where all, because I'm white and middle class and female, I did pretty well. But I always felt like I was passing or hiding in school. That the things that I was really passionately interested in could never show up in that environment. School to me felt like a place where real passion and real engagement just were embargoed. And I continue, unfortunately, to see this now, today, last week in a school in Philadelphia, which feels a little bit like a factory farm for learning. It feels like kids are in feedlots instead of wild and ranging on the open plain. And I think that's what we've got to create because learning is kind of a wild animal and it needs room to roam and range. And so over the last 10 years, what I see is learning, this vibrant, unpredictable, unpredict creative, entrepreneurial thing has really detached from this thing we call school. And we are struggling to figure out what to do about it. But that is why the Odyssey is dying, because these airless environments are going to simply drop us into the ocean without an escape hatch. And I see that happening to kids. So our work now is really to bust open the boundaries and to rethink what this institution is like and what do young people really need in their lives now. And I think they need places to go in their community where passionate engagement in learning is modeled for them. How to be tough and bold and creative, courageous about learning. And also how to figure out how to learn for yourself and with other people the things you need to know. I think that's the frontier. And unless we approach this as a complete reset problem, the institution is going to continue to wound people. I see it happening.